Hello, and welcome back to QBank Pro Academy for another Q&A with detailed explanations. Join thousands of nursing students who have used our instruction. Remember to sign up for free resources with the link below, including a study guide, 75 question exam, quizzes, and more. Let's get started. The nursing student is caring for a new patient with kidney transplant. The nursing student asks the nurse about kidney transplant surgery. The nurse correctly answers. Select all that apply. A. Kidney transplant involves implanting a kidney from a compatible donor in patients with irreversible kidney damage. B. Recipients are not screened for COVID-19. C. Donors may be a living related donor or unrelated to the recipient. D. Donors may be individuals with irreversible brain injury. The correct answer is A. Kidney transplant involves implanting a kidney from a compatible donor in patients with irreversible kidney damage. C. Donors may be a living related donor or unrelated to the recipient. And D. Donors may be individuals with irreversible brain damage. Explanation. Kidney transplant occurs in patients who are immunosuppressed. The transplant patient, as well as the donor, is screened for a number of infections that may increase the risk for the transplant recipient, including COVID-19. A, C, and D are correct. The nursing student asks the nurse about a patient with chronic kidney failure. Appropriate nursing interventions include, select all that apply. A, administer intravenous fluid D5 normal saline with 20 milli equivalents per liter of potassium chloride at 125 cc's per hour. B, administer the prescribed diet, low to moderate protein high carbohydrate. C, teach the patient about dietary restrictions. D, administer potassium phosphate, KFOS, twice a day. The correct answer is B, administer the prescribed diet, low to moderate protein, high carbohydrate. And C, teach the patient about dietary restrictions. Explanation. A and D would likely cause an adverse outcome. The high sodium in the normal saline and the rate at 125 cc's per hour would lead to fluid overload. Potassium as ordered in A and D are contraindicated in this patient with kidney failure. The nurse is taking care of a patient with renal failure. What labs are used to assess renal function? Select all that apply. A, BUN, B, amylase, C, chlorine, D, creatinine. The correct answer is A, BUN, and D, creatinine. Explanation. Three important diagnostic tests that you should be familiar with are creatinine, an indicator of glomerular filtration rate, BUN, an indicator of protein metabolism, and the BUN creatinine ratio. All three tests are used to assess renal function. The exam will ask about care of acute renal failure and diagnostic testing. The UAP asks the nurse about dialysis. All the following statements are true about hemodialysis. Select all that apply. A. The most common cause for urgent dialysis is hypokalemia. B. Hemodialysis is a process that allows the removal of excess fluid. C. Hypovolemia is a common cause for dialysis in hospitalized patients. D. Hemodialysis is a process used to clean the patient's blood, replacing the function of the kidney. The correct answer is B. Hemodialysis is a process that allows the removal of excess fluid. And D. Hemodialysis is a process used to clean the patient's blood, remove waste, replacing the function of the kidney. Explanation. Hyperkalemia and hypervolemia are more common in patients with renal failure requiring dialysis. For the exam, you should understand the difference between the terms hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. 
the nurse is taking care of a 56 year old diabetic female receiving dialysis three days a week. What are some risk factors associated with chronic kidney disease? Select all that apply. A, bleeding. B, neurological symptoms. C, hypomagnesemia. D, hypophosphatemia. The correct answer is A, bleeding, and B, neurological symptoms. Explanation. GI bleeding may occur in patients because the increased urea level leads to an increase in ammonia. Ammonia irritates the gastrointestinal mucosa, resulting in bleeding. Elevated magnesium and potassium are more common. Confusion and decreased level of consciousness may occur. The nurse's patient returns to the ward after cystoscopy. What are the appropriate nursing interventions? Select all that apply. A. Assess the patient's vital signs. B. Restrict fluid intake. C. Keep the patient in PO until return of bowel function. D. Monitor urine for bleeding. The correct answer is A. Assess the patient's vital signs. And D monitor urine for bleeding. Explanation. As usual, when a patient returns from an invasive procedure, assess and document the vital signs. The exam would expect you to know that cystoscopy involves an endoscopic examination of the bladder, and the nurse will monitor for post-bleeding. Fluids are encouraged post-cystoscopy. All of the following statements are true about access for hemodialysis. Select all that apply. A, hemodialysis arterial venous fistulas are assessed by the nursing staff palpating a thrill over the skin of the fistula site. B, peritoneal dialysis is accomplished by placing a small access catheter into the subclavian or femoral vein. C, a complication of peritoneal dialysis is bacterial peritonitis. D. Hemodialysis catheters are placed in the subclavian or femoral vein. The correct answer is A. Hemodialysis arterial venous fistulas are assessed by the nursing staff palpating a thrill over the skin of the fistula. C. A complication of peritoneal dialysis is bacterial peritonitis. And D. Hemodialysis catheters are placed in the subclavian or femoral vein. Explanation. Hemodialysis, HD, involves removal of the blood out of the body. The blood is cleansed by a machine. Peritoneal dialysis uses the peritoneal lining of the abdominal cavity to act as a filter. Hemodialysis access refers to how the blood is removed from the body. Preventing or decreasing the risk of gastrointestinal bleeding includes all of the following. Select all that apply. A. Avoid administering aspirin. B. Monitor PT, APTT. C. Avoid administration of NSAIDs. D. Avoid administration of vitamin K. The correct answer is a. Avoid administering aspirin. B. Monitor PT and APTT. And C. Avoid administration of NSAIDs. Explanation. Two medications associated with an increase in bleeding are aspirin and NSAIDs. For this reason, these medications should be avoided in patients with kidney disease. Assessing PT and PTT is a valuable indicator of coagulopathy. The exam asks about care of the most common renal disorders, critical labs, and dialysis. A 43-year-old male with renal failure and pneumonia is in the ICU. His decreased BUN and creatinine ratio may indicate. Select all that apply. A, an anabolic state. B, an increase in creatinine only. C, a catabolic state. D. Dehydration.
the correct answer is C, a catabolic state, and D, dehydration. Explanation. Note in this question, you are asked about the ratio BUN to creatinine. The decreased BUN creatinine ratio may indicate a high protein diet, increased catabolism, or dehydration. Critically ill patients with prolonged illness are in a catabolic state that leads to weight loss and loss of muscle mass. The nurse is caring for a post-op patient. Which statements are true about diagnostic testing for kidney function? Select all that apply. A, creatinine is a laboratory test that assesses the rate of hemolysis, red blood cell breakdown. B, creatinine is a laboratory test that indicates glomerular filtration. C, BUN creatinine ratio is the creatinine level divided by the BUN level to determine the ratio. D, BUN is a laboratory test that indicates the amount of urea in the blood, a byproduct of protein metabolism. The correct answer is B. Creatinine is a laboratory test that indicates glomerular filtration. And D. BUN is a laboratory test that indicates the amount of urea in the blood, a byproduct of protein metabolism. Explanation. When the BUN and creatinine levels increase, this may be an indication of renal dysfunction. The BUN level divided by the creatinine is the BUN creatinine ratio. Obtaining a urine specimen for urinalysis in a 23-year-old female who may have a urinary tract infection includes, select all that apply. A, drinking 16 ounces of water prior to providing a specimen. B, washing the perineal area prior to voiding. C, obtain the first morning void if possible. D, document menstruation on the requisition if present. The correct answer is B, washing the perineal area prior to voiding, C, obtain the first morning void if possible, and D, document menstruation on the requisition if present. Explanation. Instructing patients about the correct steps for obtaining a urinalysis sample is important. Cleansing the perineal area helps limit contamination. Red blood cells, RBCs, may be present in a sample during menstruation. The nurse must collect a 24-hour urine collection. What nursing interventions are important for the specimen collection? A. Explain to the patient that a 24-hour urine collection will be done. B. The specimen may be collected for 12 to 24 hours. D. Instruct the patient that only voids greater than 60 mils will be added to the collection. D. Keep the urine specimen on ice and refrigerate it during the collection. The correct answer is A, explain to the patient that a 24-hour urine collection will be done, and D, keep the urine specimen on ice and refrigerate it during the collection. Explanation, 24-hour urine collection is a common laboratory test. Educating the patient about the 24-hour collection will avoid the patient discarding a sample. All the urine during the 24-hour period should be collected. Collected specimens will be kept cold on ice or refrigerated. A patient is admitted to the emergency room with heat stroke. All the following are true about specific gravity. Select all that apply. A, an elevated specific gravity may be in fluid overload. B, normal specific gravity is between 1.005 and 1.030. C, an elevated specific gravity suggests a volume deficit. D, a low specific gravity may indicate renal dysfunction. The correct answer is B, 
normal specific gravity is between 1.005 and 1.030. C, an elevated specific gravity suggests a volume deficit. And D, a low specific gravity may indicate renal dysfunction. Explanation. The kidney's ability to concentrate urine may be assessed by the specific gravity laboratory test. Hypervolemia results in a low specific gravity. Hypovolemia results in a high specific gravity. What are pre-procedural nursing priorities for a patient undergoing a renal biopsy at 10 a.m. in the morning? Select all that apply. A, patients may eat a regular diet for breakfast. B, confirm that an informed consent is obtained. C, administer two units of fresh frozen plasma before the procedure. D, confirm that coagulation and clotting studies are normal if ordered. The correct answer is B, confirm that an informed consent is obtained, and D, confirm that coagulation and clotting studies are normal if ordered. Explanation. Renal biopsy is an invasive procedure that involves inserting a needle into the kidney to obtain a tissue sample. Normal coagulation and clotting studies indicate a lower risk of bleeding during the procedure and post-procedure. A patient who underwent aortic aneurysm repair is diagnosed with acute renal failure. What are the nursing priorities? A, place a non-rebreather mask and administer 100% oxygen. B, transfuse six units of platelets. C, prepare the patient for intubation. D, monitor intake, output, and daily weights. The correct answer is D, monitor intake, output, and daily weights. Explanation. All the interventions listed above are important in critical patients, but they are not indicated in a patient with acute renal failure based on the information that is given in the question. You are not told that respiratory status is compromised or that the patient is bleeding. Eliminate A, B, and C. A patient who underwent aortic aneurysm repair was diagnosed with acute renal injury 24 hours ago. What are appropriate nursing interventions? A, monitor hourly intake and output. B, start a norepinephrine leave a fed intravenous strip. C, start a dobutamine intravenous strip. D, monitor mental status change and consciousness that may be affected by uremia. The correct answer is A, monitor hourly intake and output, and B, monitor mental status change in consciousness that may be affected by uremia. Explanation. The urine output may be decreasing during this period, and further medical interventions will be done. Increasing urea and ammonia levels may adversely affect the patient's mental status. B may worsen outcome, and C is not indicated based on the information that you have. The UAP asks the nurse about a patient with chronic kidney disease. The nurse correctly answers. Select all that apply. A, chronic kidney disease is defined as kidney disease present for over 14 days. B, chronic kidney disease is a slow loss of kidney function over time. C, Patient's level of consciousness should be monitored because of the risk of increasing urea. D, patients may have symptoms of fluid overload or hypervolemia. The correct answer is B, chronic kidney disease is a slow loss of kidney function over time. C, Patient's level of consciousness should be monitored because of the risk of increasing urea. And D, patients may have symptoms of fluid overload or hypervolemia. Explanation. Chronic kidney disease is defined as specific symptoms being present for at least three months. There are many causes, including diabetes and hypertension. 
acute kidney injury may lead to chronic kidney disease. What are some risk factors associated with chronic kidney disease? Select all that apply. A, hypokalemia. B, anemia. C, metabolic acidosis. D, hypervolemia. The correct answer is B, anemia, C, metabolic acidosis, and D, hypervolemia. Explanation. Hyperkalemia, metabolic acidosis, and hypervolemia is more likely in a patient with chronic kidney disease because the patient is not making urine. The other finding, hypokalemia, is not common in patients with renal failure and chronic kidney disease.